Sorry, I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board to order. In terms of the uh, posted agenda, uh, two items have just reversed their position in the public hearings. The shoulder and the metal public hearings have just switched positions. And other than that, the Planning Board does have a few ZBA referrals to deal with, uh, both Mulligan and uh, Metal. And we have, to, well, we do also have two time extensions for uh, Henry Stout and Grassmere at the end of the meeting. Uh, I would like to ask for a motion to approve Jim's meeting notes. So moved, Melody. Second? Second, Sherry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. I hope you've all had a chance to read the September 21 minutes. And hoping so, could I have a motion to approve? So moved, Melody. Second? Mm. Second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Very good. Uh, I have no uh, correspondence or announcements to mention at this point. Does anyone else have anything you'd like to bring to the planning board's attention before we get started? Hearing nothing, we will go to our first public hearing. John Kitsch, 399 Ackard Hook Road, site plan special use permit for a ground mounted solar system. Uh, Hi, this is uh, here for uh, Kish. Uh, I work for Suncommon. Um, we are proposing to install a small scale residential ground mount solar array consisting of 52 350 watt solar panels, total of 18.2 kW DC, 15.2 kW AC. Um, the proposed array will be screened by a mixture of Colorado blue spruce trees and forsythias. And um, I believe a site, a, um, site visit was performed earlier this week. So I'll take any questions from here. Okay, uh, Edna and I did the site visit. Um, Edna, if you'd like to go first. <laughs> Sure. Uh, this is on the east side of Ackard Hook Road. It's a property that's quite high. You can see the winding drive that goes up to it. There's not a lot of level uh, land up there. Uh, the house is on an area that's level and then the level area extends back to where the solar array is. Um, because of its location and because of all of the vegetation, nobody will be able to see this array except the occupants of the house from their patio. Uh, the only other comment I have is I was surprised that it was not staked. We, we had a little bit of a uh, trouble at first trying to f figure out exactly where it was. We expected it to be staked. Leah, why was it not staked? Um, I, I think that might be a question for our field engineers. Um, you know, I, I don't go on the site for any reason. I just uh, attend these meetings. So um, yeah, maybe uh, the guys did it and it got taken down or, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Perhaps we could make a request. So since we see you fairly often that uh, the arrays always be staked. I will definitely pass that along to them. I have no other comments. Thank you, Edna. I agree with what Edna has, has pointed out. I don't see any issues with this. Uh, it, the staking is very important. Obviously, we want to make sure we're looking at the right place. And just from the map, it's not always some easily discerned. But in this site case, I don't think it caused us any troubles. I think it's a perfectly adequate place to put this, and I don't see any issues with it. Uh, any questions from other members of the planning board for the applicant's representative? Hearing none, I'd like to open this up to the public. Are there any people from the public who would like to comment on this application? No one, Jim? Uh, let me double check. Uh, nope, nothing in the chat box. I don't see anyone else up on the screen here. Okay, I'd like to uh, have a motion to close the public hearing, please. So moved, Michael. 
Second? Second, Sharon. All in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. I have a resolution. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board Herbert acts as follows. On the application by John Kish for site plan and special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125 for installation of a ground mounted solar array at 399 Acre Hook Road in the RC5 Rural Countryside Zoning District, we reaffirm the proposed action as Type 2 under Seeker. Based upon review of submitted information, including reports from planning board members and the CAB on their site visits to the project, project site, finds that the proposed work is consistent with the objectives and regulations of Chapter 125. With respect to the application for a special use permit to authorize work, we find the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with the general standards for special use permits set forth in Town Code Chapter 125. And we grant the special, we grant the requested special use permit conditional upon receipt of site plan approval by the planning board. With respect to the application for site plan approval, we find the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with Town Code Chapter 125 and approves the application inclusive of the application materials and plans by SunCom and dated June 22, 2020. And we authorize the planning board chair to snap and sign the above cited plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the below conditions or requirements within six calendar months of the, of the adoption of this resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified within town code chapter 125, payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the town of Rhinebeck related to review and processing of applications subject to this resolution and receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved, Michael. So moved. Okay, I have a, 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 mo a motion to move from Edna and a second from Sharon. Uh, any oh, yeah. discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none. I will poll the board. Edna. Yes. Melody. Aye. Sharon. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, as soon as I get the plans to stamp and sign, you will be able to get the building permit. Okay, our next public hearing, Adam Suits at 41 Round Lake Road, site plan and special use permit ground mounted solar. Okay, Leah Springs that again. Um, here uh, we've got another small scale residential ground mount solar array broken into two arrays uh, consisting of 56 350 watt solar panels, 19.6 kW DC, 15.2 kW AC. Uh, we've proposed a line of forsythias as screening um, and uh, topographically this, um, the arrays sit lower than the um, proposed screening and the proposed screening will actually be at um, the height uh, adequate to conceal the arrays at the time of planting, and then they're going to mature from there and provide additional coverage. So that's all I got. Who did the site visit for this one? Delise and Kathy. Okay. Um, <laughs> having heard nothing from them in the negative, um, we will assume it was good. We saw the CAB's written report and they found no issues with this particular application. Are there any questions from members of the planning board? None. Um, would I hear a motion? Oh, any <laughs> questions from members of the public? Anyone here from the public would like to comment or question about this application? Not seeing anything, Michael. Okay, thank you. Could I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Edna. Uh, second? Second, Sharon. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. I have a resolution strangely similar to the previous one. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board Herbert acts as follows in the application by Adam Suits for site plan and special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125 for installation of a ground mounted solar array at 41 Round Lake Road in the RC5 zoning district. We reaffirm the proposed action as type two under seeker and based upon the review submitted by submitted information, including reports from planning board members and the CAB on their site visit to the project property, we find that the proposed work is consistent with the objectives and regulations of chapter 125. And with respect to the application of a special use permit to authorize work, we find the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with the general standards for special use permits, and we grant the requested special use permit conditional upon receipt of site plan approval by the planning board. 
With respect to the application for site plan approval, we find the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with town code chapter 125 and approve the application inclusive of the application materials and plans by Sun Common dated July 14, 2020. We authorize the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the below conditions and the requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified within town code chapter 125. Payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due the town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of applications subject to this resolution and receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed action. Could I hear a motion to approve, please? So both. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon. Second. Uh, second, please. Second, Edna. Thank you, Edna. Um, any further discussion? I will poll the board. Melody? Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Moving right along. Thank you. Good night. You're very welcome. Okay. Our next public hearing is Bernard Scholdorf at 132 Rhinecliffe Road, Site Plan Review, Interior and Exterior Improvements, and Shed Dormers. Okay, hi everybody. Krista Hines, um, Bernard Scholdorf's sister, um, representing him this evening. Um, we're proposing to renovate um, 132 Rancliffe Road, interior and exterior renovations. Um, really significant changes, we're adding two shed dormers to the roof, um, but no other significant changes um, to the footprint. Um, we did have a site visit um, this week, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, the site visit was uh, Sharon and myself. Uh, Sharon, if you'd like to speak up. Uh, it, it's pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to put two dormers on the roof and not real. that's the only change, exterior change to the property uh, other than, you know, then the new siding and, and just sprucing up the place. But the, the only change is the dormer. It's not raising the total height of the house or anything. It's just, just two dormers. So I have no problem with it. I agree with Sharon. I think that uh, it works to make the place a little more livable, a little more space upstairs, certainly. The improvements that are already taking place there, I think it's going to really make the house look really quite quite nice right there along Rhinecliff Road. Um, I saw no issues with this whatsoever. Uh, any questions from members of the planning board for the applicant? I don't have any questions. I would just like to comment that opening up the porch and returning some of the original uh, structure is really an asset and I think, um, you know, it's just going to be a much nicer property, much nicer driving by there. So I, co I compliment them on their efforts. Yeah, I, Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, any other comments or questions from members of the planning board? Uh, any questions or comments from members of the public? I'm not seeing anything, Michael. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Can I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Melody. Second? Second, Edna. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. All righty, here we go. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows on the application by Bernard Scholdorf, Krista Hines, for site plan approval under Town Code Chapter 125 for interior and exterior renovations at 132 Rhinecliffe Road within the RM1 Residential Medium Density Zoning District. We reaffirm the proposed action as Type 2 under seeker, based upon review of submitted information, including reports from Planning Board members, HAPAC and CAB members on their site visits to the project property find the proposed work is consistent with the objectives and regulations of chapter 125. And with respect to the application for site plan approval, we find the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with town code chapter 125. And we approve the application inclusive of the application materials and plans by Dutton Architecture PLLC submitted August 12th, 2020. And we authorize the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of below conditions and or requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. One submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified within town code chapter 125, except as may be modified to a lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements. 
payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of this application and receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. Could I have a motion to approve, please? So moved, Melody. So moved. And a second, second from Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I will poll the board. Edna? Uh, yes. Sharon? Yes. Yeah. Melody? Yes. And I vote yes. As soon as I have the final site plan that I can stamp and sign, um, you can get the building permit and you can raise the roof. <laughs> Great, thank, you. thank you so much. You're Good very luck. welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Our final public hearing for tonight is Nikhal Mittal, 12468 Corporation, Site Plan Review, Pool, Pool House, and Garage. And do we have an applicant representative of the applicant here? Uh, yes, uh, Kyle Diamond is here, um, Andy Didio, the engineer, as well as uh, Melissa Baker, the architect, and Dale Schaefer, um, the landscape architect. Okay. And then uh, Nick is also on this call, the owner as well. Okay, if you would like to explain to the public what you, what you want to do here. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll lead off. Um, so in, in essence, uh, we have the uh, proposed garage, which is before the, currently before the ZBA. Uh, then as uh, shown in this map here, uh, we have a proposed uh, pool area, pool, as well as proposed pool house with an attached uh, pergola. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some improvement to the driveway, the proposed uh, chip and seal area. And then we have plantings uh, around the house. Um, so that is the primary component of, of this, uh, this, this project. Would anyone on your group like to add to that? Sure. This is Andy Didio with Taconic Engineering. Um, I'm not sure if I've got the ability to share a screen. I have a PDF up of um, a couple of modifications or I guess uh, revisions to the plan that um, just include some of the additional information that it sounds like was discussed at the site meeting on Friday, including grading um, and the existing septic system. So I don't know if that's feasible for me to pull up. Generally, I think these things have to be in Jim's hands so he can get them processed so he can, so he can put them up during the meeting. Um, I take it he hasn't received these yet? No, the sounded like the meeting was on Friday. So we got, we got notice of some of the comments uh, this morning. So the revisions were made uh, this afternoon. So I, I, if whoever the admin is controlling, they can allow the participants to screen share. I've got the PDF up. I mean, it's up to the board. I've, I've got the information if you want to see it. Okay. So, so generally we've got a, a policy um, at the town that all the information has to be submitted in advance um, just because we have to control what's shown on the screen. Okay. Um, and then we've kind of kept to that. It is there. Um, it's kind of been standard policy, but you know, I'll leave it up to Michael, if, you know, if you want to change that, but that's how we've been handling it, just um, just because of the nature of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Well, Michael, this this is going to be continued, so we will have yes. to look at it. Mm -hmm. That's right, and to study it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So perhaps to, you could discuss with us or describe to us what the changes have been or the modifications have been. Sure. Um, it sounded like. Um, there was a discussion on Friday about a few things to be added to the plans. Um, one of which was uh, some grading, which because of the flatness of the site, there's not a ton of grading, but we do, uh, we do show some uh, kind of leveling, if you will, of the area around the parking court, as well as just some contours around the, um, around the north side that show that actually we're pulling grade away from the house a little bit. Um, to allow for door thresholds and everything um, the around the back side of the pool and the pool house has some minor grading but um, that's all shown the um, there's a discussion about locating trees 
for that are to be removed for the pool and garage construction. So we do show a proposed tree line currently. Um, the uh, actual stem count we don't have. We're actually intended to go out to the field tomorrow to collect that data. Um, I guess one question I would have is what, what the board would consider a, consider a tree. Um, are we shooting everything from four inch DBH, uh, six inch DBH? What should we be targeting there based on the comment in the field? In some cases, it depends on the species of the tree. Uh, if we're talking hardwood, you know, probably, well, it's, hard. it's actually, it's difficult to tell. Um, certainly trees such as Olanthus and things like that, we would not at all object to being removed, things of that sort, any damaged or diseased trees. Um, but I think it would have to be probably at four inches breast height, probably at this point, which would be trees considered to save, assuming they're in good health and they're not of invasive species and they're not damaged or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. Well, and obviously based on the placement of the pool house and the, and the garage, some, some trees uh, are going to have to go um, in order to facilitate the construction. But yeah, obviously we're, we're minimizing as best we can. So we're going to shoot the trees with a, with a fairly wide berth around both the garage, the pool house and along the back of the house due to some of the patio, as you see, the patio kind of comes to the um, to the tree line there, so there will be a little bit of easing there. Um, one of the other comments that came into play was the existing septic system. So I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, we were out on site, did a septic evaluation, excavated the existing septic tank, and used a camera scope to trace to the distribution box, uncovered that, and then traced all of the laterals. So we do have that indicated on the plan. Um, so we also have, um, a septic tank and a pump chamber associated with the pool house that, um, we're still reviewing whether or not we could potentially go gravity from the, from the pool house, um, over to a combined, combined, uh, septic tank, but uh, most likely it's going to be a pump chamber. Um, if, uh, uh, but all of that, it sounded as though. Also that the uh, building department's going to look for feedback from the Department of Health. So we'll be coordinating with, uh, with Dave Pearson on uh, the revision, even though there's no increase in loading because we're not adding any bedrooms here, um, the, the, they will seek, um, most likely this board and the, and the building department will seek the DOH's approval. So we'll coordinate with Dave on that and would expect that to be a, an approval contingency if we, if we move forward. Um, the, Existing condition plan, which is the zoomed out uh, page of the drawing, C101, that now shows the uh, the creek to the right, uh, to the east side, the Landsman Kill. It's off the property, um, but we we do show an outline of that. We traced it with an aerial, so it shows that that um, based on one of the comments, as well as there are two wooden platforms. Uh, historically constructed platforms down toward the, uh, toward the toe of the slope in the back of the property. Those have also been indicated. Uh, there's a former road that runs along the Northern uh, property boundary that runs along the toe of slope there that has been indicated on the existing condition plan uh, and the proposed condition plan, but uh, it's identified in total uh, on the existing condition plan to be removed, pool house connection, septic. Yep, that, uh, I think that's, that was the gist of plan revisions that were requested. Okay, I, I had a discussion with Dave Pearson today and he had a number of questions. He'd like to come out and actually see the site and see exactly what's going on and where, where whatever is going on is going on. Uh, the house was built in 1969 as a four bedroom house. At that time, the health department was not all that involved in residential structures, so they have no records whatsoever of what the septic system consists of, size mm -hmm. of tank, laterals, and things like that. Mm -hmm. How many laterals are there, and what is their length? Uh, there are three. There's actually very, the, there are three laterals on the system, I think one of which is 50 feet long, and the other two are 40 feet long when we scoped. 
Um, so it looked ultimately we got to uh, to a point where it was just gravel for the for the trench on on all three, and used a uh, the camera scope has a tracer wand, uh, a transmitter, so we were able to trace it below grade and uh, and pin those locations, and then we we shot those with our robotic total station. And where where if it exists is a is the reserve field for the system. Well, typically it's adjacent to um, adjacent to the primary. Is that where it is in, ter in terms of this project? Yeah, that's where we would identify it. Yep, yep. Again, because there's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of options, um, but we do have sufficient space in the back. Again, on the new plan, we show the we show the lateral dispersion and then uh, the proposed replacement area. So again, that'll all be coordinated with DOH. Okay. I was, when I was looking at it earlier today, I did see the ZBA uh, plans that they had, which did actually show the uh, existing septic system area. Mm -hmm. and it seemed that the only area where a reserve field could be put on this property, you know, given the, well, as you can see, the grading and whatnot, would be up towards the, uh, where the basketball court and the garage are proposed to be placed. Well, and that, that existing septic area was um, just reputed from the owner. So we wanted to identify, you know, approximately where it was. The, yep. the, up, the most recent plan that uh, I have in front of me shows the actual laterals. And uh, it's oriented, if you, the way that you see it on the plan from the ZBA, it's oriented primarily north and south. Yes. Um, the laterals actually run east, almost due east and west. So the reserve area would be to the north. Okay. Well, Dave does want to do a site visit. And so we'll try sure. to coordinate that with you because he wants to come out and take a look and, and see exactly what, what, what you're proposing to do and where you're proposing to do it. Uh, yeah, there's certainly some concern at the health department that it's a 50 year old system built under standards considerably different 50 years ago than today. And mm -hmm. you're proposing to put in another bathroom so there will be further flows into this system. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would sure caution you. The system is capable of dealing with this. Yeah, I'd caution you to say there's additional flow. Um, there, when, the, the loading for a system is based on bedrooms. Uh, I know that, it's based on bedroom, but conditional flow means in the real world, someone goes in and flushes a toilet, that is additional flow. If someone's using the sink, things of that sort, it's an additional flow. And that's basically what they want to make sure that this system is up to that standard. I think we'd both agree that the standards 50 years ago for a four bedroom house were, are significantly different than they are today for a four bedroom house. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I, so this I is something to discuss with was. Dave. He's the professional the, engineer with the health department. He's the one who will go over this and he's the one who will advise us on what if anything needs to be done in terms of correction. Uh, we did do the site visit out there, Melody and Sharon and I, on Friday. And I guess that's the meeting that you thought was supposed to be this meeting. Anyway, we did go out there and we did come up with a couple of problems, which we spoke with uh, Kyle about. The first was that the uh, geothermal wells are already put in the ground, even though the site plan has never been approved. And it was also done without building permits, which is uh, not a good thing to have done. You'll be hearing from and seeing the building inspector tomorrow. Uh, he's coming out to take a look. There seemed to be a number of outside work done. I know that there was demolition on a deck. There appears to be work on an overhang coming off one side of the house that's being done. But in checking with the building department, the only building permit that was applied for was for the garage and for interior work, not exterior work. So that's another issue that's going to have to be resolved. And the fact that work was done outside without a building permit and without planning board approval uh, are violations under the zoning law as well. So these are a number of things you're going to have to deal with with the building inspector and the zoning enforcement officer to get cleared up so that we can proceed with this application. Um, I don't think that's a surprise to you. I think uh, Mr. Dime was aware of that after our discussions with him on Friday that these things have to be cleared up before we can proceed. I don't know if anything else at this point that I have to add to this. I don't know if Sharon or Melody, if there's anything else to add that I've missed. Um, no, I don't think so. I think you've covered everything that we talked about in the field. Okay. We will try is to- the basketball, oh, Is the basketball court still on the plans? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, that hasn't- 
Another thing that we'd like to see is a uh, approximation, if you can give it to us, of the fill required to prepare a, uh, a site to build the garage where it's proposed to be placed as it goes right up against that rather significant drop off down to that other roadway down there, which is actually an abandoned county road, or town road, I should say, but there is an easement on that road from it, on this property and the neighboring property across from there to allow people to access the landsman kill by using that. Although mm -hmm. it is not town road any longer, and I don't believe it is really approved for vehicular access. I know there have been some legal issues. I think the previous owner of this house had uh, some issues with the uh, a person who was using it for uh, truck traffic and things like that. I don't know how that was resolved. I don't know that we were ever informed what the legal outcome of that was. But um, that's pretty much what I have. Is there any other questions from members of the planning board? Or from Jim? The, uh, the, with respect to the to the garage fill, we actually aren't aren't planning on uh, on a lot of fill around the backside of the garage because of the steepness of the slope. Uh, it's very difficult to catch up. So um, the it, essentially on the back corner, that north corner of the garage, will have just a taller foundation there. So it's it drops off about four feet from front to back, from finish floor elevation to the back. So it'll just have a deeper foundation for frost protection. Okay, these are, these are the sort of details that we will require for the application to be complete for us to go through, to go over. Because obviously, when we looked at it and saw where it was flagged, uh, we saw there was a very steep decline and a number of the trees which are securing that area right now are obviously have to be removed uh, to put the garage there. So there so, is a question. Of, so when you say details, do you mean uh, like building elevations? Yes, showing, showing building that? elevations, okay. yes. You got it, okay. We were working off what was flagged in the mm -hmm. in terms of what we were visually seeing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jim, if there are people, uh, the, the public who would like to comment, ask questions, if you can coordinate that since <laughs> you'll know who's there and who isn't. So if anyone has any comments, they can let me know in the chat box or you can turn on. Don't actually believe we have anyone here for that. I think we're good, Michael. I don't think we have any comments. Okay. Well, we need to continue this public hearing. Um, I'd sort of like to hear from the planning board what you think would be appropriate. Uh, I know our next meeting is pretty well booked up. We could go to November, we could go to our December meeting. Is there a way to leave it, to continue it to an undetermined date until we've got all the information back? Until we have a complete application? Yeah. That's probably the best at this point. I'm not sure what's going to happen about remediating the building permit and the zoning violations. That's be up to the building inspector and the zoning enforcement officer. And right, I and you haven't, and you haven't been in the field with Dave Pearson either. No, we, have, we need to do that as well. Did we continue it to December? Um, otherwise, noticing has to be done again if we do an undetermined time. All right, so the first one in December would be what date? December 7th at 6.35. Well, that seems reasonable to me. Okay. Could I a motion to continue the public hearing to December 7th at 6.35, please? So moved. Second? Second, Edna. Very good, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. All right, December just, 7th. Just to clarify, um, uh -huh. I just want to make sure that um, given the fact that we need um, some additional information to make the complete application, um, building elevations for the, for the backside of the garage so that you uh, can see that that foundation uh, meet with the Department of Health and get some feedback from Dave Pearson um, and then any of the zoning items. We'll also need elevations, you know, of the house, how it's going to continue to look. You're doing exterior changes. We need the elevations of what the house is going to look like, the pool house, uh, how the pool is going to be, you know, what sort of fencing, security fencing will be around the pool. It's a, mm -hmm. basically a very detailed uh, description of what's going to go on so we know what we're approving. 
Yeah, and I believe you do have um, some renderings and elevations from the architect in the initial submission, but I'll, I'll double check and make sure that you've got, uh, you've got those. The most current ones would be good. Yeah, I don't think they've changed, but yeah. Okay, great. And I'll just mention one other question that came up in talking with Dave. Uh, the, the four wells for the uh, geothermal are certainly well within the well field area for the potable water well. So I'm assuming, well, I shouldn't assume anything. Uh, is this a closed system, the uh, geothermal system? Yes, it is. Are there any chemicals used, anti, you know, antifreeze type things, anything like that, in, or is it just pure water? Uh, to my knowledge, it's pure, pure water, but I can certainly confirm that with the geothermal company. Yeah. That was just something Dave said might be of concern, but isn't necessarily, but could be, just given the proximity of those four wells to the drinking water uh, for the property. Okay, then. Well, I think we're good until December 7th at 635. Great. Thank you all. Thank you very night. much. Take Thank care. You. Take care. Okay. Our next item, Aaron Mulligan, 402 Sapasco Center Road, Site Plan and Special Use Permit for a Privacy Fence. Hi, how are you tonight? Very good, how are you? Very good, thanks. So we're, um, oh, let's start my video. Did I start it? I don't know. Oh, there we go. We are uh, putting up a privacy fence around our backyard. I believe we had a site visit in the past couple of weeks after the last meeting, and we had the fence area staked out. And uh, it's really for privacy and security. You can see right into the back of our house. So just so that people aren't looking right into our house at night when it's lit up inside. Okay. Have you given any thought to the one the one face, the long stretch of fence along, at is it, is it Sapasco? Which way, <laughs> the long it's one along? Yeah. There you go, thank you very much. About on the outside of that, doing some planting, some forsythia, something like that, just to break it up. Yes, we, we're gonna put some plants on the outside of the fence out there. We actually had some plans with that already. Okay, that, because I think that would be very helpful because it's, it's a fairly long expanse um, and I think that sort of thing would tend to, you know, modify that and soften it up a little bit. Um, we'll yeah. be doing a site visit to come out and, and you can show us the plan you have then for what planting you'd oh, like. Oh, we don't have set plans. We were just chatting about it, like, you know, and discussing what we wanted to do in the future. Okay. Well, actually, you know, if you're going to do that, it would be helpful going forward to have that detailed on your application. Okay, well, we have press them one bridge at a time, we'll get the fence up, but you know, eventually, hopefully, we'll then save up again to have a landscaper come in. Well, they might need to be joined together. Oh, the, I, I'm, I will let you know what kind of bushes I'm gonna plant. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble understanding you. We, I was just saying we were discussing that we were thinking that we'd plant bushes out there. We have no set plans. So it's nothing I would add on to this. Okay, I, I think you'll find that the plan, well, it depends a great deal on what the ZBA has to say and what with the neighbors, because you're in so close proximity to all your neighbors in that area. And that's a very visible area, obviously, for the people that breaking it up, a privacy fence, I understand why you want to have it. But I also think that if you were to have plants and plantings in along there, it doesn't have to be all planted by any means, but just enough to break up just that big white, you know, ongoing surface. I think that would make a huge difference. Just things like nothing fancy necessarily for Scythia, things like that, which tend to grow quickly and tend to be right. easy to care for and tend to cover up very quickly would probably make a huge difference. And I think that that would be uh, make it much easier for the planning board also to feel comfortable with this type of fence because generally in the town of Rhinebeck and in the hamlet of Rhinecliff, we don't approve uh, privacy fences you can't see through. Right. Okay, uh, questions by other members of the planning board? Uh, well, Michael, what did you mean by that? Is this a privacy fence that you cannot see through? And so is that an issue? It is, that's why it's a uh, special use permit use. I see. Because you can't see through it. It's the same sort of situation we had with Henry Stout, how we wanted to extend 
that privacy fence on his property down Tater Hill Road. Right. And it's a solid wood fence. That, it's sort of like a stockade fence that you can't see through. So, so what so I just put up on this, what I just put up on the screen, I think is a, a, a kind of a simple rendering of what they're proposing to do. Okay. Oh, is that right, Aaron? Yeah. It, is the plan to have it white? Yeah. Rather than a natural wood? Yeah, because, yeah. I think it's, I think it's similar in material to the fence between uh, Village Pizza and uh, Rhinebeck Savings Bank, or maybe it's Rhinebeck Bank. No, I don't know if it's a savings bank anymore. It goes in a little alleyway behind uh, Al's, Al Stickles and uh, Village Pizza yeah, yeah. and Huck Hill's place and then the bank on the other. I think it's similar to that in terms of material. But, it, but it, you cannot see through it. Correct. And that's why it's a special permit use. And Michael, are you suggesting that for the public hearing, we would like to see the actual planting plan? Yeah, I think that's something that we need to have generally in a site plan. And that would name what plants exactly and some idea of how many and where they're gonna be. Yeah, it would, or a variety of plants. It doesn't have to necessarily be one specific plant. Hi, this is Jeff Mulligan. How are you? Very good. Uh, this is a bit of a challenge. You know, um, this lot presents a lot of challenges. Um, and this is a unique corner lot with a lot of visibility. Um, the fence that we chose is, is high quality. It's nice looking. I'm really struggling with having to commit to planting on the outside in addition to the cost of the fence. And we just put the house up and have a lot of money invested into this house. And I'm really struggling to understand why we need to commit to plantings now on top of everything else. It just seems a bit excessive. Typically, as, as I was saying, privacy fences of this sort are not approved in the town. And for reasons that, because of aesthetic reasons, primarily. I understand why you want to have it, and I think the only part that I really see needing the plantings is along the side that's along Sapasco Beach Drive, which is the only thing that other people are really ever going to see. I think as part of a project such as this, it does tend to soften it. It makes it look a little better. Right now, it tends to look somewhat institutional just to have a big white fence with nothing else there running down like that. And I think I that it would look much nicer for the neighborhood if there was just some greenery outside there to soften that up. Michael, I have a question oh. for you. Yes. Um, assuming that they are able to come back at the public hearing with a plan for what would be planted and how many and some idea of where, the planting itself could occur when, would you say, would be act adequate? In other words, say, it's not a good time to plant things right no, now. No, you wouldn't want to do it now anyway. No, it would have to be during plant, you know, either in the spring or during the growing season, certainly not at this time of year or any time immediately uh, following any approval that might be received in the plant and the fence goes up. So I'm assuming the like fence will May. definitely be built before any planting would be done. Like, like May of next year or something like that? That would probably be appropriate. You can probably get decent material at that time and it's a, probably a healthy time to put things in the ground. I guess my question is, if I commit to say, yes, I'll put Prescincia in, and then in May, when I'm ready to put it in, I decide, I don't know, I would rather lilac bushes. Am I committed to a specific plant right now? Because I'm just, What you, know. you would do is you would, you would just ask me, could that just be a field change? And if you were going from Prescincia to lilac, I would say certainly. Okay. You would not have to come back before the planning board, no. Okay. Do you have to pay any more additional fees? Nope. I'm, I'm a volunteer. They don't pay me anything. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I understand. I mean, but we're really, we're really jumping through a lot of financial hoops for this. And it's, it's, it's getting a bit burdensome that, you know, it, it, it's unreal. Like, this is, this is not a typical lot in Rhinebeck. There's probably very few lots like this in Rhinebeck. And we're really, really focused in on security and privacy. And 
I just really, again, I'm struggling hard here and I'm trying to remain patient and understanding, but we're trying to do really nice things and make this piece of property look really, really nice. And it's just a struggle. Well, I can understand that. I understand. We're, I think the thing that we're, we're struggling with is, is the character of the community. And this area in Sapasco Lake is a very wonderful part of Rhinebeck. It's a small community unto itself with lots of lovely little homes. And we don't want it to appear as if it's starting to get walled off one from another. So some of this relates to the community character. And by just adding some plant material, it makes the whole stretch of that fence more welcoming. I mean, it, it, you're going beyond the norm, which is to ask for something that we can't see through. And so the sort of help us out here is, well, give us some plants that break it up so it looks more natural and more like it belongs there. I believe it's also a six foot fence, is it not? It is. And four feet is what's allowed <clears throat> along the, the, the road, public roads is a four foot fence. And so there's a, both things are things that ordinarily are not approved in the town. If you go through Sapasco Village, I don't think you'll find another house, another lot in there that is just have a fence like this with nothing else around it, no trees, no greenery, no nothing. At least I've never seen it in there and I've lived here for 45 years. So to remain within character of this community, which I know that people care a great deal about, adding some plantings, allowing you to do this, which is not normally permitted in the town of Rhinebeck, but allowing you to do it, I understand what your concerns are, what we're asking for in exchange for that is to just to soften it up somewhat with greenery, which over time will grow in and will take care of any sort of harsh look that sets this thing apart from anything else in that whole community. There are no trees there. There's no nothing there, just a big white fence. And that uh, we really understand that. You guys have to understand that community. You have to understand we just built this house, which is just completed. And we spent a lot of money doing it. And we have a lot of money into other projects. My fear is that I'm not going to be able to meet a time frame of May or April or whenever it is in order to get this done. And I don't want to run afoul of the town. No, I understand that. If, there, if you run into a problem like that, just come and talk to me about it. I can understand a situation like that and we can just work out a, a different time schedule. We have no interest whatsoever in nailing you to the wall because you don't meet a specific time schedule. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or anything before I have a procedural permit so we can, a resolution so we can move along with this application? Hearing none? Okay, let me, let me find the resolution. Okay, got it. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows on the application by Aaron Mulligan for special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125 and site plan approval for a fence at 402 Sapasco Center Street within the NIO Neighborhood Infill Overlay District Zoning District. We accept the application and supporting documents as adequate for further review by the Planning Board, its advisors, and public, and we classify it as Type 2 under Seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. We're scheduling a public hearing on the application for... November 16th at 6.35. Okay, November 16th at 6.30. Thank you, Gretchen. And we direct the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof in accordance with the requirements set forth in Town Code Chapter 125. We delegate planning board members who would like to do a site visit to Sapasco Village. Okay, and they put it another way. Who would like to go with me to do a site visit in Sapasco Village? I'll go, Michael. Okay, thank you, Edna. <laughs> to conduct a field visit of the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. In accordance with the Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board, we refer the application to the CAB for review and written comment concerning environmental factors. And we authorize without prejudice to any information or comment that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise based on both the above cited field visit and referral preparation of a working draft of an approvals resolution with the Planning Board's consideration on October 19th. November 16th on that one. November 16th. November 16th, or as maybe later timely. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> All right. Oh, Quite all right. Could I hear a motion to approve, please? So moved. And a second? 
Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. All in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. I shall be getting in touch with you to set up the site visit, which we you know, do before the, uh, before the public hearing. And if all goes well at the public hearing, then we can close the public hearing and we can give you a, a resolution of approval for this. So you can get a building permit. Right. Um, one question. Is there anything special sure. that we need to do for that site visit in, in advance? Um, I think the pictures you have are plenty and it'll just show us where it's going to go. What you might want to do is just take some wooden stakes, put them in the corners of where it's going to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I staked it out for the zoning board um, and the, the stakes are still That's there. Just leave them in place. That's perfect. Okay. I don't think anything else. I think the pictures you provided are adequate as well. Okay. okay. So we'll see you sometime soon. Very well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. We have we have two time extension requests. One from Henry Stout. I believe this is for his um, village town property, the, the thing we first approved with him. Yes. yes. And yeah, there he is. Okay. He's requesting a, uh, an extension on his approvals for, uh, for six calendar months from the dates the plans were stamped with the planning board chair. Um, January 8th, extension provides that. That should be 2021, I'm sorry. Okay, 2021, January. Anyway, not, I'm not ready for it to be 2021 yet. Okay. Okay. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? And add none. Any questions about this one? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Very good. Then we have one for Grassmere. This is an extension for the reissue that we did um, just a little while ago. Um, and I just, I guess I'd like to say at this point, I don't know that I'm gonna feel at all inclined to reissue another approval for the old phase one, 1A, whatever it was, that this is an extension of. I kind of think that we've been issued an extension to the point where I don't think that, um, I think it, after a while, you, you just have to stop. So anyway, um, this- are you, say, are you saying that you are not in favor of it as it's written now before? No, no, I'm fully in favor of this extension. Okay. And allowing, allowing the extension that, that they're asking for, for that reissue. But when right. this extension runs out and this thing is okay. about to go belly up, I don't think we should just you know, procedurally go through and just reissue this approval again, which we reissued, I think, almost through, what, six, five, six, seven years ago, whenever it was. So do you want the resolution to indicate something along those lines? Or is that not appropriate? Why don't we leave that out so we can, you know, discuss this with the applicant? I. Okay. Uh, I know Jim has been in some contact with Jonathan and um, John Montaigne, and there seems to be some movement towards coming up with answers to our questions and comments, I think. Um, Jim, Jonathan, Jonathan and Victoria are online if, if they want to open up their mics. I think they were just going to listen into the extension request discussion. Um, but I think the best thing to do is to do this extension. It's, it's been documented now in the comments and, and you know, this video that will be online, and Gretchen can certainly document it in the meeting notes as well. Um, what was just discussed. I think we should probably keep this resolution clean. As clean but, as possible. I agree. Okay. Did they wish to and, say and anything Jonathan, again? I'm sorry. As I said, Jonathan and Victoria are on the line. They're listening in and, and know the conversation that's going on as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just unmuted. Yeah, no, I, I, heard, I heard the comments. Okay. Could I hear a motion to approve the extension? So moved, Melody. Second. Was Sharon the second or Edna? Edna. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Very good. Okay, so that is done. Is um, it again? Okay, I, never mind. I saw the, uh, never mind. I caught myself. Okay. And I think that we had a, uh, the referral for Mattel. I think <clears throat> we did one back about two months ago. <clears throat> 
at which time we said we didn't see any planning issues, things of that sort. Since we've done the site visit and that's after tonight's discussion, as you, as you now know, we found very significant uh, issues, I think, that uh, need to be addressed. And therefore, I think I would like to uh, send a revised recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals that they, first of all, definitely do a site visit out to that site. Um, that there are potential planning issues that we've identified. We obviously don't have the full details on them. We don't have the full details from the applicant yet, but that a site visit is essential. And um, at the same time, I think that we can also share with them our comments on our site visit, what we saw, what we found, and the, the different issues that are now have to be addressed and remediated really before this uh, application, this project can go forward. Um, I don't know exactly, um, oh, I see Jim's working it on right now. Well, Michael, like uh, yes. I recommend that the ZBA do a site visit, which I think is very strongly warranted. It's critical. It's very critical to the understanding of the property. You have to be on the property to see what's going on. Um, but we will be working to set up a, a visit, a return visit with Dave Pearson. And we might suggest to the ZBA that someone from uh, their board accompany us on the same, on the same visit. I, I think that's a good idea. I mean, I, I think this stands on itself fine here, but you know, we can alert them to the fact that when we're gonna be there and if they wanna okay. send someone at that time, I think and it would be very that. beneficial. I'll, I'll talk to Christina, I'll call Scott <clears throat> and let them know when we finally set this up since we seem to have a lot of players who are gonna be taking part in this site visit, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's fair so, to say that the work that's already been done without any permits definitely yeah. requires the Zoning Board of Appeals to get out there and really understand yeah. what's happening. And, and Ed Maddock, our building inspector, will be going out there tomorrow. And I think that uh, Michelle is doing training today and tomorrow, so she may not be able to get out there till Wednesday. Okay. So can I send a, a new, we'll send a new response back to the ZBA? Um, and if so, of what I, as I lay down here and highlight, kind of done what we think we wanted to do. I, I think that's it. Um, so essentially saying, need to say say that, um, I think what, I like what you have, finds that the requested variance raise planning and environmental concerns. And they, and it does. I think the garage, the way he was describing it, where they had it flagged, it was over that precipice. And, um, they were very vague in discussing how they were gonna deal with it. Well, I also think the thing is that the lack of sufficient engineering information has left us in a position of not really understanding what's being proposed on the property. Yeah. I think we may also, once we finally get a final version, possibly even the version he says we have, he has now that he just brought today, uh, share this with, uh, Ray Drakowski to take a look at. I'm wondering, because of the nature of the land and where it is, if a stormwater pollution prevention plan may not be necessary for this. I, uh, it's just, I mean, I don't know. But um, one thing we did hear tonight that, you know, Andy Didio has now identified other areas where grading is going to be required yeah. that we didn't know anything about before. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't mean to be a stickler for not putting things up on the screen, but we've made it a pretty solid, you know, requirement. We have to have things in advance, both to be fair to the planning board members, not to see things cold at a meeting, but also to, you know, make, to make sure that the information that's getting put out here publicly and recorded is information that's been vetted so that we know what's in there. Not that I expect we're going to have any issues, but uh, in terms of general policy, I think it's a, it's a good policy to follow. So it seems a little silly, but I think it's important. I don't think it's silly at all. I think, first of all, it hopefully disciplines people into coming up with the correct information in a timely manner. I mean, this stuff's been dribbling and drabbling in since, and it's still dribbling and drabbling in, and I'm sure what he brought in tonight on the PDF probably is going to be different by tomorrow morning. So, um, okay. Everyone so what read, I read the... Uh, 
Sorry, yes, no, I was just gonna say, so if, if what I've written I'm just is gonna say, can everyone read this? Yeah, if it's generally okay, then you know I can I can tweak it, you know, a little bit with you, Michael, to be final. But if anyone, everyone's generally in agreement with this, we can kind of run with it. Seems good. Okay. Could I have a motion to approve, please? So moved. Second. Second, Melody. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. And we had one other referral from the ZBA, and that was for the Mulligan fence. Um, I think they need two variances for that. Let me pull that one up for you. And I think one of the variances is to go to six feet rather than four. And I thought there may have been another one. Oh, the transparency of the fence? Well, that's the special permit. Oh, okay. To do that. Oh, okay. So here's the the referral. Um, it's within 50 feet of the front lot line and then the six foot height. It's, it's okay. the so I, I put together a resolution, you know, either finding that there are no issues or if there's something else we wanted, the planning board would like to do, we can write that up as we go. Is there some way that we can ask the Zoning Board of Appeals to take into consideration community character? Well, they're definitely supposed to do that. That's. But can we flag that? Well, it does say, in the normal thing that you recommend and the input of neighboring property owners. Um, I think what I would do is I would say that we find the requested variance raises potential planning, uh, planning, planning issues. And would it be appropriate? Am I, am I the only one? Am I the only one that feels that way? No. We can, well, you see down below it says, you know, when they make their decision, including consideration of input of neighboring property owners. But we can make that more specific. Would we also like to add in uh, the plant that do we feel it's a recommendation we'd like to make to them for the variance that plantings outside the fence on the on the street side of the fence be included in any, uh, as part of a variance approval? Or do you think that's going too far? Well, my personal opinion is that they're asking for things outside what we would normally approve within the town and we're asking them to mitigate the impact of those changes, the height and the lack of transparency by adding some landscaping. I don't think that's an unreasonable request. I don't either. And I think perhaps we should actually, you know, write that out in this saying that in, in granting their request for a privacy fence, which, which exceeds uh, standard dimensions for fences, um, we feel that to mitigate the Michael, what, what do you think about suggesting that the ZBA require that the applicant meet the planning board's requirements for plantings? I, mean, I think I like that very really much. Want to go on in two different places. You know, you I want think I like that very much. I'm sorry? He likes it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it very much. Do they require planning board's re request? Is that what you said, Edna? That the applicant meet the planning board's uh, request or requirements for plantings. I would make it requirement. Requirement, you said, Melanie? Yeah, instead of request. I like it. We, we haven't defined that requirement yet, so there's still plenty of opportunity to discuss and negotiate exactly. what the requirement might be. But I, I'm hearing us all feel that plantings are an important element in this application. I agree. And I think what the ZBA is doing, they're just granting variances, but they're not approving the actual site plan. Right. That's right. what we do, and that's where the plantings would, would come in. 
but they can certainly premise the approval of the variances on the requirement that the, uh, the planning, a planning plan agreed upon between the applicant and the planning board be carried out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Good. Okay, could I hear a motion to approve? So moved, Edna. Second. Second. Sharon. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Very good. Um, that's all I got. 